the biblical truth of our hymn. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. So our 77th video, written by Samuel Trevor Francis. Little history before we break into it. Samuel Trevor Francis, a lay preacher, English, and hymn writer with the Plymouth Brethren, a religious group. And he was a merchant. And it says here that Mr. Francis, as a teenager, had a great turning point in his life that when he was thinking about suicide, and when on a bridge over the River Thames, a renewal of faith, which brought him to author many poems and hymns. And this song compares Jesus' love to the ocean. The characteristic and the fullness of the limited, limit, limitlessness of Jesus. The unchanging of Jesus. And that sacrificial of God's love for Mr. Francis and for all humility, 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 humility. So when we look at this hymn, this hymn is written personally by Mr. Francis and his life story. And we've got to realize that many of these hymns are a personal. I have written many poems in my life. And I have a few that have been published and copyrighted. And most of them are of my life being of what had happened or what was going on to me. And when we look at the Hindus that we're looking at right now, the one I hold, Not all the hymns are all for all people. Now he stressed the fact is this hymn is for him and all humanity. I mean, there are hymns I love to tell the story. Really, can you imagine a carnal worldly Christian singing I love to tell the story? Can you imagine a lost man saying or singing, I love to tell the story? Let's get down to our hymn. Oh, the deep, not just deep, the deep, deep, a oh, verily, verily, a repeating, as the Bible repeats, love of Jesus. And it is the love of God that he, he gave us his son, Jesus. And it is the love of Jesus that when we say the death, the suffering and the death of Jesus, we're talking about brutality. There has never been such a man that suffered pain than that of Jesus Christ when he stood before the Sanhedrin. Until he said, it is finished, and gave up the ghost. Vast, unmeasured, you realize, in the wedding vow, say, to death do you part. And one of the parties can die. And you remember, I, I know I'm a widower, but do you realize when a married couple, however when it is, 
when they both have died, that love is gone. There should be no other love but the love of a husband and wife. And you may have children, they love you, and you may have your parents, and they love you, yes. But with human beings, love dies. When the two parties are in love, have died. Jesus said, when we get to heaven, we're, ne we're neither given to marriage. We'll be like the angels. The Bible says all things are made new. The former things are... When I meet my wife, been married twice, in heaven, I'm not going to have that love that I have with them on this earth. And sometimes that love was a fleshy, carnal kind of love. I'm not going to have that fleshy, carnal love and glory. But with the love of Jesus, the Bible says before the foundation of the world, before even Adam was even thought of, before God gathered that dust and made the man, The love of God already began. And the love of God will go beyond 2020, the year we're in right now. The love goes all eternity. Realize when we walk the street of New Jerusalem, we will be there before the throne of God because of the love of Jesus Christ. How can you measure? Let's say the world has been here for 6,000 plus years, maybe more. But what about before the foundation of the world, before the earth of Genesis 1-2? I believe in the gap theory. Before Genesis 1-2 and before Genesis 1-1, when there was eternity past, there's no time. And when we go into the eternity future, Revelation 21 and 22, there is no measurement of time. There's no seconds. There's no minutes. There's no hours. There's no days. There's no weeks. There's no uh, uh, months. There's no years. No centuries, no decades, nothing. So then the love of Christ goes beyond measure because in eternity there is no measure. Boundless. It is a salvation that's not tied. Anybody can come in. It's not a matter of race, sex, age, creed, sinner, Republican, Democrat. Anybody can come. If you are bound in sin, you can be made free by the love of Jesus. And like the next word, free. It doesn't cost you anything to be saved. Rolling as a mighty ocean. And that's where he takes to the love of God as a mighty ocean. In its fullness over me, again, me, written personally by Mr. Francis. Oh, that God came to me, he said, with vast, unmeasured, boundless, free love. As the ocean would overflow me. And it's his personal testimony. This is the testimony as if I were to tell you the testimony on April 21st, 1987, when I got saved. If I were to write it down. What he did. Is the current of thy love, there are ocean currents, leading onward, God's love, Jesus' love, 
goes in first. It moves ahead with us. It's up ahead when we haven't got there yet. You know, you're going down the highway and, and the sign says, all right, there's an exit up ahead. There's a rest area up ahead. This town's up ahead. We're walking with Jesus on the highway and says, there's more love ahead. There's more to living for Christ up ahead. There's more for you if you keep walking. Homeward, homeward to my glorious rest above heaven, glory, New Jerusalem. This guy said, hey, I'm going to glory. I'm going to heaven. How am I going to heaven? Never mind the pilgrim brethren. How is he going to heaven? He says, by the love of Jesus Christ. What is the love of Jesus Christ? It is God's love. What is God's love? That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Oh, how great the theme of this is. Spread his praise from shore to shore. How that, and from where he is, look at the Atlantic Ocean. If I were to put a human in a life uh, raft preserver and put him in the Atlantic Ocean anywhere, you know how infidel that person would be? with all the waters of north and south to east to west of the Atlantic Ocean. You know what your chances are to send one airplane out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean to find that person? And yet we're to spread out that word of Jesus A. I know of a man, I guess you would call him a missionary, and he works with seamen that travel in ships all over the world. I would assume that ministry would get the gospel out. A men go on ships and ships to ships to ships to ships. I support, one of the missionaries I support is to Indonesia. You say, what attracts you to Indonesia? Indonesian people love to get the gospel out. They love to tell the story. And one of the things that attracted me by what the missionaries say was, they are ship-faring men. They go out all over the world, and many ports of the world have Indonesian. If you can get a saved Indonesian with the gospel, he's going to spread that gospel. That's what Paul in his journeys did. If you look at a map, his first journey, his second journey, and his third journey, he went to ports and preached the gospel to all the people that were going to port. And these people would move on wherever they're going. They would get back on another ship and go somewhere else. They would travel in caravan. They would take from the port and get the gospel out everywhere. We have a ministry here. We've been doing it twice. Uh, Daytona 500 and the Bikers Week. And when we witness to people at the Daytona 500 or the Bike Week, we are not dealing with people from Daytona Beach, Florida alone. We are dealing with people who Deland, Florida, uh, Miami, Florida, Tallahassee, Florida, Panama City, Florida, and <clears throat> the Key West, Florida Beach, I don't even know. And then we're dealing with people who come down here from them from Georgia, Texas, Oklahoma. Connecticut, California, maybe Hawaii, maybe as far as Alaska, and maybe off into Canada or Mexico. Maybe another whole country on the other side. And what we're doing is we're getting the gospel out from shore to shore. And with Daytona 500, the possibility and the, the bikers, we, we may be getting it from the Atlantic shore to the Pacific shore in the realms of the United States. Going all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them about Jesus. They get saved. Let them go wherever they're going and tell people about Jesus. How he loveth 
That's Jesus, how Jesus love it. Ever love it. Again, a verily, a verily repeating. This is not the, the uh, contemporary music kind of repeating. This is, I want you to pay attention. I'm saying it twice, and the scriptures do that. When God wants you to get your attention, he repeats it. David does that with his songs. What is the love of Jesus Christ? Some idiotic punk child grew up in a place called New London, Connecticut, wherever that is. Just angry with the world and just, just against God and, and just rebellious. And I, I won't even tell you all my sins. And the love of God sent for you know for a grandma to say, fight that guy, fight that kid to church, that black sheep. Fight him to church. Again, do it again. All right, he's gonna yell at you. You know, all right, I'll go to church if you just shut up. I'll go to church. And then the love of God is on, on April 21st, 1987. I knelt down at a coffee table at my grandparents' house and I received the Lord Jesus Christ and I got saved. Why would God love me? My sins are under the blood, but if I were to tell you fact by fact by number one, two, three, four, five, if I were to tell you the sins I was involved in, you would turn this video off, you would turn this audio off, you would call my pastor and say, get that guy out of that church. That guy is filth, and I was. And yet the love of God, the style you believe on Jesus Christ, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, without I'm going to hell. You confess your sins, I confess my sins, Lord. Then I am faithful enough to forgive you of those sins, I'm going to cleanse you. That's the love of God. And the love of God goes forth. Not only did he save my soul from hell, but if I do what he tells me to do, I'm going to hear God say, well done. God will reward me with gold, silver, and precious stun st stones if I do what he tells me to do. I make it a millennial kingdom reign, a city. I'd be happy with a town. Changes never. Now, I've had it in my life twice. And one is an offshoot that one kind of did. Where a person has believed that they are just beyond wickedness of a sinner that God could never save them. Whatever they've done, God can't save them. Christ has not changed. He'll take the lowest sinner and he'll take the wicked sin. No, there's there is no degree of sin for all have sinned come short of the glory of God. Never more. How he watches over his loved one. He's up there in heaven right now at the right hand of the Father. And not only does he watch over us, my add to Mr. Francis, I'm not, he prays for us. He has sent forth the comfort of the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in my heart. And when I sin against God, I am making the Holy Spirit that dwells in me sinning against God. And he still loves me. And he convicts my heart. And he tells my pastor, he tells my Bible reading, speak to that heart because it's wicked and it's sinning and it needs to repent. Listen, when, when you're reading your Bible, you hear your pastor, or you hear a tape or a, a video or MP3, and God is speaking to your heart because of something you're doing wrong or doing right. That is the love of God saying, hey, I got your attention. Died to call them his own. I believe this guy is saved. This guy has got the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died. According to the scripture that without his death, 
I'm not saved. I'm remarkable in a class that I learned in Institute that there are people who teach out there that Jesus did not die. He, he passed out. And then when he was laid in the tomb on that cold rock slab, the coldness of that rock, he became alive. And that was really the resurrection. That's a heresy. That's a lie. I just read today in Corinthians that Paul said, if there's no resurrection, then there is no life. We're most miserable. Christ had to die. That's the gospel. And his death calls us him. You are a Christian, not by church. You are a Christian by believing on the suffering and death of Jesus and his burial and his resurrection. We're called by his name, Christ. How for them he interceded. There's that prayer. Christ ain't dead today. He ain't nailed to the cross like, like the Catholics would have you to believe. He's at the right hand of the Father and say, Father, he's going to get in trouble. Father, he's in trouble. Father, look what he's doing. He's doing what we told him to do. And the Holy Spirit prays for us. So you think, oh, no one prays for me. If you're a saved, born again Christian, Christ Jesus and the, and the Holy Spirit are praying for you now. And they may not be praying for what you want. Watches over them from the throne, at the throne, at the throne. <laughs> At the throne. Christ is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Christ ain't sitting cross-legged in, in a mountain cave. Christ ain't sitting or meeting at the dumb of the rock. Christ is not sitting in some in some church building somewhere. Christ does not attend your church building. Christ is in the throne of God in heaven right now. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus again. Love of every love the best. What is the ultimate love of all love? Jesus Christ. God is love. Jesus God, yes he is. God, Jesus, yes, then Jesus is love. The Jehovah Witnesses have no love because they don't believe that Jesus is God. And if Jesus is not God according to their heresy, then he's not love for God is love. And when you don't make Jesus deity, make Jesus, then Jesus had no idea what he done for us because God is love. And for God so loved the world, we love him because he first loved us. And that love had to be a love of a holy, righteous God love. That he had to be God. And it's the best love. Tis an ocean vast of blessing. How vast is the ocean? And how every day you wake up. Every night you slept, every breath that you don't even know you take, all your cells doing what they're supposed to be doing. Right now, my white blood cells are probably fighting an infection. I, I got an ear infection. I got problems with my feet. I got problems with diabetes. But there may be a germ that, that my blood cells, hey, we don't want that. <laughs> And maybe my body right now, maybe it has the touch of the coronavirus and my body is fighting it. Say, no, no, let that in. And every beat of my heart, and I don't even know how much my heart beats, every flow of blood through my system. 
that it goes from my heart, goes through all my body, and goes right back to the heart. Every brain cell I have that I have not killed off. My eyes, my ears, my mouth, my tongue, my nose, my hands, my feelings, my touch, my walk. All the red lights I don't like. Had it been green, that guy would have ran it and I would I got clogged. I'm a street preacher. How about all the times I don't realize that God protected me while I was preaching? How about all the things that could have happened that guys said, nope? How about all the times that the devil's gone up to God and say, let me at him like Job? No. You're not going to do that. And we don't even know. Listen, it's the tip of the iceberg about the devil and God with the book of Job because I guarantee there are many other times that the devil came up to God about Job. I'm telling you right now, I'm not bragging. I don't want to brag. It's prideful. The devil has come into my life because I'm trying to live right. And I guarantee that there are things in my life that the devil said, and God's like, nope. I just wrote the other day, and you, there are many times in my life I should have died. God's like, nope. Not yet, not done with him yet. That's a blessing. I'm not done with him yet. Lord, I want to give up. I'm tired, Lord. God, no, no. Just comfort her, work a little harder on him. He, he's a numbskull. He's he's impatient. Just comfort him. That's a blessing. All kinds of blessings. Count your many blessings. Name you can't name them one by one. I'm not ranking on that song. You can't. Because the very first thing you have to write down is I'll be able to write. <laughs> Number two, I got a piece of paper to write on. Tis a haven where ships come in, sweet of rest. I always And maybe this is not true for others. I'm, I'm thinking about tracing how she's suffering, but for me. And I'm really not sure. I've always said this before, and I'm really not sure if I can say it about somebody else, but maybe it's true. There's somebody else suffering worse than you are. Someone today in the world has third degree burn or chemical burn. And I have been told that those burns don't go away. I'm lonely. I pray to God for a wife. There's somebody in a nursing home right now who they may have a family, but their family don't come and see them. Their family don't care no more. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Tis a heaven of heaven. To me, personal. This is a personal testimony. And it lifts me up to glory, for it lifts me up to thee. You know what? You know what? The, you know what he sums the whole thing up. The love of Jesus brings him to the love of Jesus, and a greater love of Jesus. That's what he sums it up at. It is getting lovelier, more as he loves him. <laughs> Jesus loves him, Mr. Francis. The more I love Jesus, the more he loves me. The more Jesus loves me, the more Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. <laughs> and even when we're sinners, I've sinned against God. And Jesus still loves me. I say, Lord, I've sinned. I'm sorry. He's like, okay, it's under the blood. That's love. I 
ask the devil to love you. Go ahead. You know, they sing on the radio, love, love, this love, I love you, that love, this love, this love. They don't love you. You know, you go out and buy that 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 performer, that, that artist. You go buy all his albums, CDs, whatever they are today, cassette tapes, I'm old. You buy all his t-shirts, you buy all his, his, his posters, you get all his books, you get everything that guy has, you buy one of them. What's the chance that that singer is going to sit in your hospital room and hold your hand? I said, I, I'm a widower. I sat with two wives at a hospital bed as they died. I couldn't do anything more for them after they died. I'll tell you what Jesus did for his love. He took them home to glory. There no more pain, no more sorrow. No more suffering. That's love. You know what the more love of that is? That is forever. And there's coming a day that Jesus is going to wipe the tears away from their eyes. Glory to God. Put this one in the book. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus.